Hello friends, this is Durga from IT Varsity. At this time we are talking about developing the WordCon program and um, we have uh, uh, um, parameterized the uh, input path and output path. We have seen how to externalize uh, the execution mode and now let us see how to run it as a jar file. Okay, uh, so for that first you can go to the IntelliJ uh, or any Scala ID you, uh, you, you are using right click on your on the project copy the path go to uh, DOS prompt in Windows or SIGWIN in Windows or uh, Mac terminal or Linux terminal and then CD and paste the path and here you will have the build.sbt which will have the dependencies defined and your source code will be under src and target will have the compiled classes and also the jar file once we build the jar and the way you can build the jar using sbt is by saying sbt package and uh, we have make we have made sure that the project which we have created using scala ide which is intellij is that the project is of sbt project okay and then hit enter it will compile all the programs which are modified since uh, since the last compile time and then it will build, rebuild the jar file and the jar file will be available in this path okay and uh, you also need to understand the naming convention of this jar file uh, it is nothing but the name of the project underscore the major version of Scala hyphen the version of the project. Okay, you can see it here spark demo underscore 2.10 which is Scala major version hyphen 1.0 which is application version. And then using this you can actually run in local mode or in standalone mode on your local spark setup uh, we made sure that we have spark set up locally as well at the beginning of uh, the course as part of getting started we can use that uh, to submit and to submit the job you can use the command called spark hyphen submit if you need if you want to see the help you you just type spark submit and hit enter it will show all, all possible control arguments which you can pass as part of the spark submit out of all these things only mandatory is class and you have to give the class name so in this case spark submit hyphen hyphen class and the class name is fully qualified class name of word count in this case which is word count dot word count okay and then you have to give the jar file name and the jar file name is this one either you can give fully qualified path like this or you can also give relative path from the current directory which is this one once you pass the jar file name our program word count takes three parameters the first one is the execution uh, environment which will uh, determine our execution mode if I pass dev it will try to run it in uh, local mode if I pass UAT it will try to run it in standalone mode if I pass prod it will try to run in yarn mode in local spark setup you can either run in um, local mode or standalone mode but not yarn mode so here I will be passing dev you can also review application dot properties and you can see when I say dev we are trying to run this dev dot uh, execution mode uh, and the value of the dev dot execution mode is local so when I pass the parameter as uh, dev uh, it will try to run the uh, spark application in local mode and then it also takes the input path and output path input path is users uh, it varsity research data word count dot txt in your case you have to come up with your uh, own directory name as input path and output path is users it varsity research data and word count this is my output path and hit enter 
now the job is running in local mode it will just take a moment and we will review the output path so while it is running let me copy this output path and you can see I'll say ls ltr and hit enter it has created only one um, one file okay and now if you want to run it in uh, standalone mode you can pass the first parameter for the program as uat instead of dev okay but to run in standalone mode you need to make sure your master is started and also your slave is started for standalone and that you can run by saying start master and start slave first i am stopping master and slave because uh, if you end up suspending since the last start of uh, the master and slave uh, uh, if you end up suspending your computer uh, since the last start of your, the master and slave they might be in inconsistent state so always on your pc as part of this effort it's better to restart the master and slave so you can start master like this and then slave takes the um, parameter of the master url which is this one in this case you need to determine what is yours um, by uh, that that is pretty straightforward you just have to say spark hyphen slash slash and our pc name and then the port number so now the master and slave are started the same thing is added to the uat.execution mode as part of the application.properties and now we can actually uh, do the spark submit everything else is same spark submit class the class name is word count word count and we don't need to specify any master here because the parameter uh, value argument the first argument which we are passing will determine the execution mode and uh, then we have to give the jar file name which is target scala spark demo underscore 2.10 hyphen 1.0 hyphen jar and then first argument is uat second argument is the input path third argument is the output path and you can run it so running in standalone mode has few advantages it actually runs in pseudo cluster mode if there are any issues with respect to uh, spark execution framework uh, you will be able to identify if you run those things in standalone mode even if you don't have access to uh, the production type of clusters such as mesos or yarn it will it will uh, let you identify few of the issues uh, as part of your own pc itself uh, so um, make a habit of run, uh, running your application using spark submit against standalone mode if you don't have access to yarn based or UA, uh, mesos based clusters before deploying it in uh, testing environment or production environment now if you see ls ltr on the directory you can see it has actually created two files earlier it has only created one file when i run in local mode uh, because uh, when we do it in standalone mode automatically it will actually uh, use most of the cluster related uh, uh, framework and uh, it will be as close as you run it in the cl cluster even in local mode i think you can run it in cluster mode but it is a little bit different uh, than the way we have ran okay so that being said uh, that's it for now we will also see how to run this uh, in yarn mode it is not possible to run in yarn mode uh, locally unless we have yarn also set up locally uh, for that reason i will try to uh, demonstrate on my lab as part of the next video thank you bye